Ian Davis here with Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures. Just kind of want to go over one of my favorite Bahamas flies. Now this isn't your typical bonefish fly. This is for fishing deeper water for bigger fish. So it's a little larger hook, a little heavier fly, a little larger fly in total body size and length. And as we all say, big fish, big fly. So we call it the Gotcha Clouser. It's a combination of the Gotcha and Bob Clouser's famous Clouser minnow. So a little bit of both mixed into one. I've added some rubber legs, but I always think it's important, you know, not to claim it as my fly. Um, you know, most of the flies nowadays are, you know, compilations and combinations of different people's flies. So it's just a fly I found that works really well. It sinks quickly and it doesn't pick up a lot of water. Water, two very strong attributes to flies in the Bahamas for bonefish. So as you can see here, I'm using pink Kevlar thread. I've already got my eyes on it. And so I'm gonna start with a craft fur tail. I like craft fur because it doesn't pick up a lot of water and it's tapered towards the back. So when you cut your craft fur, you wanna get a nice sizable chunk and clip very close to the bottom and pull out those guard hairs. So I grab at the tips and pull out and that gets rid of the shorter hairs and then I lay it across the top just as we'd start any clouser minnow. And I want to have a nice sizable tail on there so it's probably about twice the length of the hook gap hanging off the back. And I tie that in with the pinch method, pick up, pinch, and that keeps all the materials on the top of the hook shank. So I'll go ahead and wrap that all the way to the eye, come under the eyes, pull my material over the top of the eyes and that also helps the eyes from spinning which is a very important aspect of a fly that's tied very well with a lot of durability don't be afraid to put some glue in there as you're securing the eyes with your thread so now that I've got my tail secured I will add my two rubber legs now these are hot tipped rubber legs that are tan or clear with a little orange on the side and I go one at a time so I go one on the outside, and that's the length of the tail. Pinch method to keep it on the side of the hook shank. And then I'll tie in my other one. We'll come in for a closer view on this here in a little bit. But you'll be able to see step one. And then I just do this on the other side. Again, it's pinch method. And I trim the two pieces. And that's the end of step one, the tail. Okay, so we've got step one. We've got the eyes on the hook. We've got the tail, the white craft fur, and on either side of the tail are the hot tipped rubber legs. And now we're gonna add our diamond flash pearl, which is our body wrap, which kinda is the gotcha part of it. And now I'll lay this across the back side I think that prevents a little snagging or wrapping of the tail around the hook of the shank or the shank of the hook and then I'll wrap and that also leaves a little flashy tail on there. So once I get that tied in, then I will flip the hook over, bring my fret thread forward, and then wrap with the diamond braid. And I like the pink thread underneath it because it kind of gives a pink hue to the diamond braid as it glows from underneath the actual materials when it gets wet. So a really sim super simple step, just wrapping forward and then I'll leave actually a little piece on here about the length of the hook and that'll fray and come apart as it gets used and that kind of acts as a little underneath flash as well, a little iridescence within the body. I use a little foxtail to create a little bounce in the fly. So I've trimmed this off already and pulled out the guard hairs just as we did with the craft fur. And then I'll lay this in there. And what this really does is enables, because craft fur, when it gets wet, kind of fades away into nothing because there's not much to it. So there's no bounce or body to the fly. So I think by putting a little bit of natural fibers in there, whether it's coyote or fox or um, Arctic Fox, see how it gives a little bounce in there and it kind of holds the craft fur up a little bit. And then I take a little pink craft fur or orange 
and I put that just in about half of the ones I do. And this piece will be a little longer, and I think that gives it kind of the spawning shrimp look and is a little bit more contrasty to the white or tan sand bottom so the fish can pick it up a little easier. Tie that in. And then I take a little tan craft fur, brown, tan. You just always want to match the color of the fly generally to the bottom of the color of the flat, sand, marl, turtle grass, what have you. So I'll lay this in across the top. Tie it in with loose wraps. Cinch it tight around the hook. Clip this extra. Tie it in. And then I take a little bit of holographic flash and I'll put just two or three strands Maybe four. Clip that. And I'll put this right on the top of the fly. That kind of gives a little sheen or a little shine because this could be a shrimp, it could be a bait fish, and it gives just a little bit of flash. You don't want to overdo your flash, not too much. Other things you can do is you can get some of this barred craft fur and run it along the sides as kind of lateral lines. You can take a piece of holographic flash that's more tinsel and run that along the side as the lateral line of a bait fish. I usually just do this, it seems to work really well. And then I'll just take my whip finish and finish it off again with all these flies. Have fun with it, change it up. Variety um, is you know, definitely a fish attractor. Uh, there's no doubt that fish want to see different flies, maybe not in the Bahamas where they don't see many flies to begin with, but um, it's, uh, it's always fun to have fun with these flies. A little head cement at the end. And it's finished. Okay, so we've tied our fly. Just kind of want to review with everybody what materials we used. So when you go to your local fly shop, you can pick up the right things. Craft fur, lots of different colors. I like the tan and white is my go-to. And then we talked about the bard. This is hard to find. I find them at the local fishing shows. And then I like the fly fishing shows that tour the country and all these different colors and then a little bit of pink. And then maybe a lighter and darker version of this. Again, match your fly to the color of the setting where your fly is going to be. So if it's pure white sand, a little lighter color. If it's marl, kind of darker muddy bottom, a darker colored fly. And then some flashaboo or holographic flash. The flat diamond braid body. This is pearl. Copper can be a really good color. They call it the bully special. Um, and uh, you'd want to use you know darker colored materials when you do that. Your hot tipped rubber legs, Kevlar pink thread, and then a whole variety of eyes. You know I, I like black bead chain eyes. The silver are good too. And then obviously your dumbbell eyes in different shapes. I think the weight of the fly is the most important aspect of it. If you're fishing deep water, three to five feet, big dumbbell eyes big strong hook. If you're fishing shallow water, smaller bead chain eyes, smaller hook to enter the water quietly to not spook the fish in the shallow water. Single most important factor of the fly, your hook. These big bone fish that you're fishing for in the Bahamas or Venezuela or the Seychelles or parts of Central America, you want a strong quality hook, particularly for permit and tarpon. I'm a fan of the Gamagatsu, um, but a lot of brands are out there that are really good. Just don't buy them out of the discount bin. There's a reason they're in there. So that's that. Um, good head cement. Always use it throughout the steps of your fly. And uh, happy fishing to you. Thanks for watching this Yellow Dog Fly Fishing Adventures Fly Tying short film.